Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a prototype copy of Pampero. It's an economic Euro game set in Uruguay and it focuses on wind energy. And before we begin, I'd like to ask you if you'd like this video and subscribe to the channel. Currently 95% of people watching these videos have not subscribed to this channel. Don't let that be you. Pampero is a burst of cold wind that flows from west, south, or southwest across Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil. The game is played in Uruguay, and in the game, their government is concerned about their dependence on imported fossil fuels. And they're looking inward, seeking to increase the share of domestic resources, and of course, the most feasible options are biomass and wind energy. The hope is that they will focus more on wind energy, which also solves other problems like economic growth and creates more jobs. The Uruguayan government has set incentives to improve their power distribution throughout the nation. First, they need to increase the power supply to the rural areas of the country. And second, improve their power delivery in general. And players play as companies who need to take advantage of the winter wind called Pampero to generate power by placing out their wind turbines. Anyways, let's get right into this game. The board is separated by three different areas and the rural area are the A zones and then there are the B zones and then the more urban C zone area. These zones will be referenced throughout the game and you will need to plan to have resources in areas to take certain actions. Everyone will also start the game with eight action cards and a planning board with three action discs, a power grid and an income board, and lots of other wooden components placed out on these boards in certain areas like your wind farms, your electrical towers, bulldozers, and transformers. Players will take turns either playing one of their eight cards onto their player board, retrieving all of their played out cards on their action board, or passing and taking a battery from the supply. Players will place an action marker on their planning board each time that they take an action. When everyone has performed their three actions, a consolidation phase occurs where players will reset their action discs, they will retrieve a card from their board, they will produce batteries, collect income, and advance their disc on the time track. When a player is placing a card from their hand, which will be the majority of the turns, they can choose to play it into the leftmost space of either the top or the bottom of their board. These choices will determine which zone you will be performing your action in and how much money you might pay for those actions. Some spaces have two slots that can change the zone or the price that you pay to take that action that's on the card or depending on the card, how much money you will earn. You will cover up the zone you don't want to use and have the zone and the money shown that you do want to use for that action. You will then pay the cost shown if your played out card shows a red bar with a negative money sign on it. Some cards might alter the cost. For example, this one has an asterisk and you can use a number of batteries according to the zone that you're playing in instead of paying money. With time, you will gain additional cards that will possibly change the cost or the requirements. Many cards also have requirements listed here on the card, and many of the starting cards require a bulldozer, either your own or someone else's, to be in the same zone that you want to perform the action in. Others require an electrical tower in that zone. Some new cards might require that you own that bulldozer or electrical tower, while others only require that there is one there of any color. A general rule for the cards are when orange, the orange cards, you will be playing their actions in the chosen zone that the card is placed in. Gray cards still need to be placed in a zone, but their action doesn't occur in that zone. So if it costs money, then you will choose the lower amount slot. And if it gives you money, then you will place it in the higher amount slot. So again, this card will trigger its action in the A zone and will cost $5. This action will be done in the B zone and will cost $10. And this card is gray, so not connected to any zone, but the player will collect $17. The last little icon to go over before going over the main actions is this heptagon. Yep, that's right, it has seven sides. This refers to your energy, so if the card has a heptagon with a question mark, then you will follow it to the space that was placed in, and you will move your available energy up on your power grid by the shown amount. Of course, building wind farms will cause this to occur but maybe other cards that you gain during the game can do it as well. So then let's go over the main actions on each card, which is shown in the middle. 
Each player will have two of these cards. You will build a wind farm and then play a bonus token. The main board has three different types of construction sites and for this action, the player will use the wind farm space or a space that can be either wind farms or electrical towers. So if you played the card here, I pay the shown cost. This card requires a bulldozer to be in the same zone, in this zone. If that is your own bulldozer, you will pay the bank. If it's another player's bulldozer, then you will pay that money to that player. So really, you can position your bulldozer in good places and let other players use them, and then you can benefit from it. This main action is placed in a wind farm from your supply onto the construction site on the board. Then, your energy goes up depending on the zone it's built in and the space or slot that the card was placed in. If you have any bonus tokens, you can then place it on this card to take that bonus. These bonuses can be gained by being a player who places the second or the last transformer so that the bonus has a transformer on both sides of it on its connection. It doesn't matter who plays the first transformer on the one side, but the second player to place the last or the second transformer takes the bonus to use with a card that has a bonus spot to place it on but the second player to place the last or the second transformer takes this bonus to later then place on a card that has a bonus spot on it to use it. And then lastly, whoever is the owner of the bulldozer that was used in the action can move it, moving their own bulldozer to another space on the same zone or any space on any adjacent zones. And that's how you build wind farms. Next, this card is building electrical towers. Again, you have to have an available construction site matching the electrical tower and a bulldozer in that zone of any color. You will pay the cost according to where you place the card. This card is a little bit different as you can pay batteries instead of money, which is different, and the amount of batteries that you pay depends on the zone. If the bulldozer is yours, the money or the batteries go to the bank. If it's another player's, the money or the batteries go to that player. You will then take the leftmost electrical tower from your power grid board to place onto the main board. The last three spots of this gives you immediate bonuses when placing those as well. And placing these will let you progress on both the income track and on the contracts. Now, this card also shows a plus with two bonus icons on it. This also means that you will take two orthogonally adjacent bonuses from the electrical tower bonus board. If you built in zone A, you take your bonuses from the A section. If you built on zone B, then you can take the bonuses from either A or B sections. And building on zone C, you can choose two from anywhere, but they always have to be orthogonally adjacent. After bonuses are removed, there are permanent bonuses that can be used as well. And these bonuses are placed on the matching space on your action planning board. And some of these bonuses are immediate, while others improve your other actions or provide additional scoring. And then like usual, the owner moves their bulldozer to a new space in the same zone or in a space in any adjacent zones. After those examples, you should now know how much you're paying when you're playing a card down and the shown requirements that you need to play certain cards. So I'm going to skip over talking about these in the next cards, unless it's something that's a little bit different than usual. But with this card, you can either fulfill a standard contract or a foreign contract. And there are four types of contracts in the game. Standard contracts use this icon and provide energy to residences, factories, commerce, and resorts. And the energy is provided directly from your power grid. The foreign contracts provide energy to neighboring countries, either Argentina or Brazil. You will have to store your energy in batteries for completing these, and both can only be done when you're placing this card in the slot for Zone B. Another contract type are remote contracts, like it shows on this card. The remote contracts will use energy from your power grid or from your stored batteries. And the last type of contracts are solar contracts, which are not represented on either of these cards, but they supplement energy supply with solar energy. And the solar contracts might have residence, factory, commerce, resort, or remote icons on them, but that doesn't make them standard contracts. These can only be fulfilled when taking an action that shows this solar icon on it. And normally you will only be fulfilling one contract for this action, but some areas have a contract link to another. And if so, you can also fulfill the contract on the other end in the same action if you meet the requirements. 
Now, contracts can only be built if you have unlocked them by building enough electrical towers on your board. This one letting you do these types of contracts, this one letting you do these types of contracts, and this one letting you do this last type. These are all for zone A and B because this one will unlock all types in zone C here. So with this action, you will pay the cost to the bank if using your own electrical tower or to another player if using one of theirs, and you will spend energy from your power grid board required by that contract. And then for each green arrow on the contract token, you will advance that income marker by one. However, it can never enter into a band that is still locked. So for that reason, you need to plan out building your electrical towers to unlock these spaces. You will then take the contract token from the board to be placed on the control display on your power grid board in a space occupied by a transformer. The first time doing this, you will have to start on one of the spaces in the leftmost column. Later, it needs to be placed in a space that's lower than your remaining electrical towers and that is connecting to where you have built already. Sometimes you might need to pay a penalty if one is listed connecting those spaces. And some spaces give an immediate bonus when placing your contract in them as well, so keep a heads up for those. You will then place the transformer in the location on the main board where the contract was sitting. If this space is connected to another contract location by pre-existing power lines with a bonus in the middle, and the contract on the other end is also covered by someone else's transformer, then you can take that bonus tile into your area. Going back to the income track, for the first token that lands or passes a TAN space, you will take a specialist card from the display. And there are three shown face up that you can choose from or you can take one from the top of the deck. And these cards are added to your hands to give you better actions, while these cards over here allow you to score more points. The scoring cards are never played out, but you can use them when scoring occurs and they will be used once and then discarded. When fulfilling a foreign contract, you will follow similar steps, but you will pay in batteries. These cards are kept for possible in-game scoring, but also give income indicated on that card. This card lets you play the way that you want to and lets you be a little more flexible. But essentially, you will be choosing one of the three actions that are very similar to the ones that I've explained already. All right, two cards left. We can do this. This one lets you take money from venture capitalists. With this card, when placing in a slot, you will gain the amount of money shown. This is like a loan where you will gain money now, but you will place this in one of the slots above your board. These tiles will have to be played to the left of your electrical towers at that point, and you will take the income from the one income marker that is in the same tier as the private investigator marker. But then at the end of the game, because of all this, you will subtract $30 from your total. Again, you're gaining money now to then subtract it at the end of the game. And now this is the last card from all the cards that everyone starts with. You will pay the cost from the shown zone as well as pay one battery to either move one of your bulldozers on the board to another construction site anywhere or move two different bulldozers each once. This card doesn't interact with the zone, so you can place it on any of the slots to perform this action, but if you have a choice, you should place it in one of the less expensive slots so you don't have to pay as much. Whenever moving a bulldozer for any action, you can instead permanently move it to this grid where it's decommissioned and instead it's promoted to being an engineer or an electrician and an accountant, a specialist of some sort, and you can take the added bonus as well. You want to do this because it could be worth for some scoring purposes to have bulldozers in this section. You can also place it in this unlocked section to not gain a bonus. And if it's needed, you can always move with a bulldozer movement action to place it back on the board, anywhere on the board. But it also will be used for in-game scoring if it stays in that section, if that in-game scoring occurs in your game. So then after all players have performed three actions, placing their action discs on the board, a consolidation phase occurs and they will remove their action markers to start again. They will retrieve one card from the rightmost spot of either row on their planning board. If any bonus tokens are present on those cards, they will collect those as well to use again. You will then produce batteries by finding your energy marker, following it straight up to the electrical towers, and then counting how many battery icons are in the vacated spaces. 
from there and then to the left. Placing electrical towers onto the board is important as it will increase the number of batteries that you can produce each round. It gives you access to new contracts. It unlocks a new column of contract spaces on your power grid board as you can't place any contracts past where you still have electrical towers on your board. And it can unlock a new band of income levels where your income markers can move up, making it more lucrative. And similarly, they won't be able to move past sections where you still have electrical towers on your board. Continuing, the players will collect income by checking the row of each of their income markers, which are remote, resort, commercial, factory, and residence, and the income for each is listed below the tracks. Lastly, during this consolidation phase, you will advance your disc on the time track. If the disc is ever the last to enter a space with a money sign, a scoring phase occurs. This first scoring phase will let each player gain money by how well they enhance the power distribution in rural areas. Those are zone A's. And you'll do this by counting the number of icons on each type from the contract tokens on your power grid board, and then multiplying that number by the income shown on the income track of that same icon. The second score will reward money to the player who has contributed the most in each category to enhance the power distribution in that area. Players count how many icons they have on their contract tokens, on their power grid board, their specialist cards, and their action planning board, and the player with the most takes the money shown on their income tract for that type. And the last space that has a red money sign is the in-game scoring, and players will gain money from the tiles placed on those areas. If not the end of the game, the turn track is repositioned by the order shown on the time track with a disc furthest becoming the first disc in the turn order track. But when it is the third scoring at the end, players will evaluate the in-game scoring tiles. They will play any specialist cards remaining in their hands that they didn't play previously, and they will score all in-game bonuses on built electrical tower bonus tiles on their player board, and then players pay back their private investors, 30 bucks a piece. The player then, with the most money, wins the game. So this is one of those games where you feel like you start seeing some patterns and how mechanics work, but as you continue to play and see more and more, you see all the possibilities of combinations that you can do and the strategy that you can do, as well as why this is a heavy, complex Euro game. The theme definitely comes through as you're building up wind farms and electrical towers to provide energy throughout Uruguay. And since this is a huge national project, you gain rewards by fulfilling contracts. The scoring phases definitely set up the overall goals, which you can play different ways to achieve different levels of these. If you focused on just zone A stuff, you might get a good payout for the first scoring phase, but not might not lead as much during the scoring phase of others because you didn't focus on the specific type of contracts. And you can figure out different strategies to do with a, a blend of these scoring phases, but also what another player is doing might affect what you do as well. And the last scoring phase should largely affect your strategy as that's a big way on how you can gain more money at the end of the game. So strategy will largely determine who wins and who loses in this game, but the strategy isn't overcomplicated. You're starting with eight cards and you really have six possible main actions that you can perform during the game. And that seems manageable, right? Well, the order is how well you do these actions and the placement as to where you place your cards in its slots and the zone that you choose to perform the actions in will really be those little details that will benefit you or do you in in this game. But really you need to be doing that and ultimately trying to move your income markers up and you will have to manage unlocking your board to allow for growth by placing out electrical towers on the board. And you wanna grow your power line board and move up on the income track by fulfilling contracts. But lots of the contracts cost energy to fulfill so that's why you need to place out wind farms and doing actions to gain batteries. They are energy and can be used to perform all of these other actions. Really, the combination of everything makes sense in real life, and then the same combo is made to make sense in this game. So when you're in a spot where you need more energy, look to build a wind farm. Looking to do something to advance the game, 
Well, complete a contract of some type. Need to open up your tracks? Well, electrical towers. And well, all those things are needed when playing down cards as well, or at least bulldozers and electrical towers are, the game has a small use of a deck builder, but not like the typical deck builder that you think of, but you can gain additional cards to gain better options that work for you and your strategy. And you have to manage the deck as you will gain a card back after every three turns. And hopefully you somewhat plan this to get a card back that you really want to use again, a powerful card. There is somewhat of a race to gain those little bonuses on the board when players are building in certain places, and you can even strategically move your own bulldozer to a space where someone else might likely activate it so that you get their money and they get that spot. I think the things that make this game stand out is that the sections of the player board combine so much that they affect each other, and so the placement of your contracts will be a small decision that might affect stuff later on. But also the unlocking of the board with the towers as well. You'll be wanting to do something, but then you will see that you need three other things done prior to being able to do that. But when those three turns pass, you might find a better way to spin those turns, and the order of your cards will greatly determine this, but also your money and the other small decisions in the game. Again, this is a prototype, and so I can't comment on the quality of the, the finished game as it's not made yet, but this prototype is fantastic with dual layered boards, the wooden components look nice. Nothing to me yells out that this will be a game that cuts corners as far as the quality of components. Ultimately, this is a game that you will need to play several times before being great at. Each time you play, you will learn and see more of the connections between things, and I wish I could play the game more myself to have better comments on these things, but this copy needs to move on to another person now, and I will have to wait till the game is produced to be able to play it again. I'm sure I could learn a lot more on how to play things and set things up better and be a more efficient player in this game if I had time to play it more. But if you like heavy Euros, and you probably do because you're still watching this video, then you should look more into this game. As for my couple plays, I don't see any weaknesses in the design and can just see how all those small decisions can really add up slowly to form an overall strategy in this game. So build your wind farms with your family and friends in Pampero, an economic heavy Euro game by Ape Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.